How are we doing today, boys and girls? It's Iron Wings 3187 coming at you with another Iron Wings Reviews today. So I decided I was going to do a little bit more of a recent purchase of mine for a review. This is actually my Ruger Mini 30 Ranch Rifle chambered in 7.62x39. And this is probably one of the more recent firearms purchases I have made in the last, I want to say, a year. I think I've had this for maybe three months, and I bought it for $800, I want to say, at my local gun shop. can't really remember because of all the taxes, the droves fees, everything else. Um, so, when I originally picked this rifle up, it was a couple of months after I picked up my Mini 14 Ranch Rifle. And I just, for some reason, got a bug up my ass where I needed to have the Mini 30. I wanted both of them. I'm not really wanting a Mini 300, I think is what it's called, the Mini 14 chambered in 300 blackout. I don't really want that just because to me it doesn't really serve a purpose when 300 blackout is harder to find than 762 by 39 or uh, 223556. And since I live in California, you can't really make it a suppressor host either, so... There's not really any reason to buy a 300 Blackout Mini Ranch Rifle. Um, but anyway, I bought this for $800, which is about $100 under market value. Uh, but it's a little overpriced for a used rifle. And the reason why it was selling cheap, even though it's an inflated time during the pandemic and everything else, is because the original owner said the rifle just did not work. It would only load one round, fire, and then jam. I had no clue why that was, but I saw what looked like a bit of rust on the receiver. So I decided to take a chance. When I took it apart, I realized the reason why this rifle never worked is because the guy never cleaned it when he got it out of the box. As far as I could tell, there was three or four-year-old petrified uh, Cosmoline or preservative oil between the cam and the... the bolt cam and the action bar. So... Basically, what that did is, because of the resistance between the cam and the actual action bar, it slowed the action down, made it sluggish, made it to where it didn't work properly. Um, after I cleaned that out, cleaned out the action, gave it a deep scrubbing, this thing worked perfectly. Um, I'll get into some of the functionality a bit later, but for now, it works perfectly fine. It's a little bit stiffer than my Mini 14, and yet, at the same time, a little more loose. The tolerances you can hear it rattling around are a bit looser, which leads this to not being as accurate as it potentially could be. Again, you don't go into buying a ranch rifle and expect to get like a sub MOA gun at 300 yards, especially one in 762 by 39. So instead, I pick this up with the acknowledgement this is probably going to be a coyote or a bobcat rifle in my home. When I first got it, it didn't have the magazine loaded in because obviously it's in a gun store. You know, not a lot of rifles in there actually have a magazine loaded in them. Unless it's something like a fixed AR or AK mag. Basically, once I picked it up at the gun store after my 10 day waiting period, I take it home, open up the box, and inside the only magazine that came with it was a Pro Mag 10 round magazine. And that's also part of what led to the reliability issues. Um, for those of you who don't know, ProMag is already a very notoriously bad company when it comes to aftermarket magazines, especially for the M4, AK, those types, semi-automatic rifles. Pistol mags, so far as I know, not awful, but for rifle magazines, they are notoriously faulty and cause jams. So I decided eh, I'd give it a try, loaded up the ProMag, and I couldn't get it out for the life of me with the bolt closed. I sit there and I actually have to whack it with a rubber mallet that I use for disassembling my percussion revolver to get this thing to eject from the rifle. Big reason for that is mainly because the rifle is a little bit... Well, it's not even the rifle. I can't even blame the rifle for this. I read on forums online that ProMag Mini 30 magazines are notorious for not working if you have the action closed. If you load them with the action closed, they won't allow you to open the action and cock it, load a round in the chamber. Um, it won't eject when the bolt is closed, 
it's just there's a lot of issues with it to where you are the recommended loading for the uh, pro mag series of magazines is you open the bolt hit the bolt catch uh, the bolt hold open load your pro mag in and then rack around into the chamber which as it sits having to if I'm at the range or in the home or whatever I don't like the idea of having to load a magazine on an empty uh, chamber because to me the last thing I want is this bolt me slapping that magazine in this bolt getting sent forward and around being in the chamber when I don't want it to be if I want this rifle loaded I want to be able to slap a magazine into it rack the ba uh, chamber rack the bolt back and be able to know I loaded around so for those of you if you're gonna buy one of these a mini 30 make sure it does not come with a pro mag magazine if it does go out and buy yourself a couple of factory Ruger magazines because honestly I thought this rifle was broken I thought someone had almost converted it to a fixed magazine type rifle because it was so stiff and difficult to get out to the point where I had to start like smacking it. So I went out, I bought a couple of Ruger factory magazines for like 40 bucks a piece. And sure enough, they load up just fine with the bolt closed. They uh, load rounds perfectly fine. The Pro Mag had an issue with actually loading rounds into the chamber. It was to the point where this basically became a uh, bolt action straight pull where you would pull the bolt back, let it go, and it would stop maybe about a quarter of the way, and you would have to pull it back, let it loose again, let it loose, and then hopefully it would load that round into the chamber. Not so much of an issue with the uh, Ruger factory magazines. There are a few um, videos around the internets that show, okay, this is how you file and fix this Ruger Pro Mag magazine to the rifle so it functions better like a factory mag and to me I shouldn't have to stone the uh, stone the magazine retention there's a little hole on the front of a magazine that is the magazine catch I shouldn't have to file off the back of the actual magazine lip uh, again part of the magazine catch system because there is a pin that hooks into the front of the magazine you rock it back and it catches on this little lip on the actual uh, magazine uh, magazine release. So I shouldn't have to sit there and file parts off of a magazine in order to get it to function properly, in my opinion. These rifles are fairly notorious for being picky with their ammo, especially Millsurp ammo, where it's recommended you go out and get a Wolf brand new factory gear spring, hammer spring, which gives it a little extra power and hits those uh, military and steel case Burdan primers a little bit harder, make them ignite more reliably. Um, other than that, when it comes to, other than just having issues with light strikes on primers, I haven't really had an issue with this failing to eject or feed uh, steel case ammo in factory magazines. It's not as accurate as I'd like it to be, but again, you don't go into buying a ranch rifle expecting sub-MOA groups. You go into it expecting a minute to two minutes of angle at 100 yards. And realistically, that's kind of why I got it, is because I'm not a sharpshooter. I'm not going out past 100 yards with this rifle. And on top of that, the 7.62x39 starts dropping like a stone at that distance anyway, past that distance. So, let's talk about if you should buy one of these. Personally, if you're in a restricted state, I think this is the rifle for you. The reason for that being, there's no pistol grip, there is no foregrip in terms of where you can attach a vertical foregrip, any of that type of stuff. Um, so, because this is very much a ranch rifle, a basic rifle, and not tactical, this is kind of your restricted state uh, ideal. Because you can get detachable magazines without having to get a fin grip or, you know, break the rifle in half to reload it. All sorts of different things that you'd have to do with like an AK or a M16A or 15 platform. Outside of the United, or outside of places like California or, you know, New York, would I recommend you buy one of these? Meh. For the price, 
not really because you're looking at a thousand dollars factory new maybe even eleven hundred or twelve hundred depending on the variant you get and it's really not even close to as accurate as you would get out of some well-built AKs. And those are probably even a little cheaper at the seven to $800 range. I could go to my local gun store and get a 10-round Riley Defense AK, though, for $900. And I guarantee you, because the front sight is almost canted, crooked, it's so poorly assembled, that it wouldn't be nearly as accurate as this. So can I recommend you go out and get one of these rifles? I'd say probably it would be a fair shot or a fair chance for you to get one. It wouldn't be ideal. It wouldn't be perfect by any means. Um, but it would be actually a fairly good rifle for you to own if you're in a restricted state just because of the bare bones operation of it. Add on, it doesn't tend to draw too much attention to itself for a rifle chambered in 762 by 39 um, as for the actual quality control aspects, the rifle is fairly well put together. As you can hear though, the tolerances are just a little loose. But at the same time, that kind of lends itself to being a little bit more reliable because while that does allow space for things to get in between parts, it also allows enough space for the parts to operate if there is some dirt, my, uh, moon dust, fine silt, any of that that gets into the action without clogging it up. So, would I recommend you buy one of these, as I stated before? Yes and no. Sometimes you need a rifle that is a little bit more simple, a little bit more powerful, that sort of thing. And in that case, I can kind of recommend this rifle for you because it is just kind of intuitive if you've ever operated a Mini 14, an M1 Grand, an M1 Carbine, anything like that. Um, if you're in a non-restricted state, I'd probably just go with one of the cheaper model AKs or ARs because you can still get ARs today that are chambered in 7.62x39 with uh, magwells that are designed to accept AK magazines. At the same time, it's also kind of a sore spot where People who buy these, you typically have to hand load for them, and that can be a bit problematic because the bores on these are not our typical 7.62. They are not 308. They're 311 bore diameter. So you have to specifically search for bullets in the 303 style British diameter of 311. So if you own a Lee Enfield, you'll probably be set for reloading this. You just have to get brass cartridge cases because. With our glorious president now ruling that Russia cannot import steel-cased ammo and add in the ongoing Ukrainian war, it's not likely we're going to see a lot more shipments of 762 by 39 steel case for the foreseeable future. In that case, I would highly recommend you go ahead and start picking up reloading materials for this. The bullets, the casings, brass, um, because in the future when those... In a couple of years, when places like Bass Pro Shop, um, Cabela's, Walmart, any of these stores that have an import license for steel-cased ammo, when those expire in the next few years, it's going to be a lot harder to get steel ammo. So I'd suggest right now going out and investing in the reloading equipment if you want to get to a 7.62x39 rifle because you're going to need a way to get ammo for it. And unless you're wanting to pay an arm and a leg for brass-cased ammo, you're going to have to start getting into reloading. So, I personally haven't at the moment because I'm already into 30-30, 8mm, 2-2-3, a bunch of other cases. So, I'm going to wait a while before I stockpile some of my own homebrew reloads before I start getting into reloading 762 by 39 I do have the components, I just don't have the dies yet, and I'm just not going to get started for a bit. Other than that, like I said... For the price point, if you're in a restricted state, this is probably your best option for the chambering. If you're not in a restricted state, you could probably do a little bit better based on the price point. But if you do get a d good deal and you just like this rifle, go ahead and pick it up. It's going to be effective. It's going to be somewhat reliable if you use brass case or if you get the wolf hammer spring that's extra strength. Y you'll be able to use it and use steel casings with it. Uh, but it's not going to be really as reliable as your typical AK platform. Um, other than that, 
Go ahead and hit a like, comment down below what you think of this rifle. If you like my contents, feel free to subscribe. Otherwise, this has been Iron Wings 3187. I hope you liked the video, and thanks for watching.